Welcome everyone, I'm Raf and I'm the director here at the Institute for Marine Research and I'd like to welcome you back to our channel and to the first of our methodology videos. The first of our videos will be about our reef fish community structure methodology as part of our bigger long-term reef monitoring project here in Down. The basic question that we're trying to answer with this methodology is what drives the diversity, richness, and biomass of the fish here in Dowin? Whether it's the diversity of the seafloor, whether it's its structural complexity, or maybe even its protection status as an MPA or non-MPA. We look at the fish um, all over the coast and try to find out what drives where they are and where they aren't. And thus try to gauge if certain measures can be taken to mitigate or to help the populations of these fish. Historically, there have been a lot of different ways to gather this data to answer these questions. What I want to do with you guys is run through some of those methods so we can look at their pros and their cons so you guys can better understand why it is that the Institute uses stereo video systems in order to collect their data instead of these other methods which are available. And thus, explaining to you guys and showing you why our data is so special and why our Institute works the way it does. The first method, and one of the most commonly used, is the rapid visual census. This consists of either a transect of a set distance, or by standing still and having a set distance around you, in which you count fish. Now this is done using a slate and pencil. You sit in one area, or you go along the transect, and every fish that you see, you write it down. This method, like any method, has its pros and its cons. The pros are that it's cheap. Normally, you don't need any kind of specialized equipment, just a slate, a pencil, and your mind. Second thing is that the training tends to be really easy. You can get it quite quickly. All of this combines to be something really easy to do that really can be acquired by anyone and done in citizen science. Now, the cons of this are the memorization. In order to get the fish underwater, you actually need to memorize them. And that means that you have to have either an extraordinary memory or you have to pick and choose which fish or which groups you're going to identify versus the ones that you're not. This picking and choosing can cause, can cause subjective measurements to change, and that can be bad. Now, talking about measurements, sizing is actually really difficult underwater. There are people that are better at it, there are people that are worse at it, but it's really, really hard to size underwater. This, of course, as you divers know, is because when you're wearing a mask, it actually makes makes things look bigger and closer, while at the same time making certain fish that are already a little bit far away be even farther away. This makes it really hard to size fish. Now, this means that between one surveyor and another, the data can be wildly different for the same transect. The next method we're going to explain, and one of my personal favorites, is BRUVS, or Baited Remote Underwater Video. Normally how this works is you have a structure, normally like a cage, you have a camera in the middle of it and a stick sticking out with a bit of bait at the end. Right? So what it does is that bait attracts the fish and then using the camera you can actually record all the fish and if you use stereo video you can actually size the fish as well, which is really, really cool. When it comes to the bros, there's also its pros and its cons. When it comes to its pros, natural fish movement has to be the biggest pro when it comes to bros. What that means is fish, when they're around divers, don't act naturally. Divers scare the hell out of fish. It's true. It's just what they do. Whereas bros tend to be less impactful when it comes to how they affect their behavior. So you get a more of a fluid motion of what fish actually look like. Also, um, you're only restricted by your battery life. So when you have a diver down there, you're restricted by the air in that tank. Whereas when you have a camera, it's the camera time which usually is much longer than the diver could stay underwater, that actually limits you. And third, and what I think is the biggest pro, is that you don't actually have to memorize any of the fish underwater normally when you do bras because the analysis is post-dive or post-immersion. That means that you're in a lab with a screen with all your books that you're ready, which means really good ID. You don't have to select which fish you have to memorize or not anymore. And the cons, of course, are that it only attracts fish which are attracted to that bait, which means it's good for predators, it's good for scavengers, not so great for herbivores, and not so great for any fish which would be scared of these carnivores acting emphatically as they would when they are feeding. 
Now, another con can of course be that it's expensive. You need to have a good solid camera, you need to build a rig and throw it down there. This can be a lot of money, especially if you're doing stereo video systems in order to get length and weight. So um, that kind of restricts um, your, your ability to do this kind of method. Now, other than being expensive, um, it can also do damage to the reef. Being that it has to be lowered on the string, unless you do lower it with divers, you actually have to be really, really careful. The last thing you want to do is be dropping a big, heavy rig onto the surface of the reef and breaking it. And the final con would be that you're limited to the space directly in front of the bruv, which means if you put it in a location that is not representative of the whole reef, you're not going to get great data. Next up, we have fisheries data. Now, this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, when fleets of fishing vessels go out into the ocean, they have to report what they catch back to the local government, and then the local government tallies up these figures and they have them for management. Now, this um, has its pros and its cons, just like any other type of research. Its pros are, of course, that there's usually a lot of data, and this data isn't done for you as the person who's doing the research, it's done for regulatory methods, so a lot of uh, fisheries around the world have to provide this data, which gives you bulk data when it comes to this. That's a lot of analysis, and that can tell you a lot about the different environments which are being affected. Now, um, another great thing is that you don't have to guess on the size or the weight. As I explained before, it's really hard to guess size and weight underwater, um, and there's always going to be a little bit of error no matter what method you're using. But with fisheries data, that's not going to happen, because you literally have a ruler, and you can have um, and you have the weight of the fish coming in. So no real guesswork to be done there. And finally, fisheries data gives you information on the fish which are being directly exploited, which can be sometimes the most important things to look at. Now for some of the cons. While fisheries data is very um, good and very bulky, it can also have a lot of gaps in it. Sometimes fish data given to the government isn't complete because A, they're trying to stay away from fines, B, it could be that the fish that they're catching can sometimes be considered bycatch and thrown away before they're ever reported. So you have a lot more death that isn't being put into those numbers. It can also be difficult to access this data. A lot of people are very secretive about their fishing data, especially from prying NGOs who they think could cause them to be looked at in a bad light. And um, one very, very obvious hole in fishing data is no take zones and MPAs where you're not allowed to fish. Fishing data doesn't give you anything here because technically they shouldn't be there in the first place. Finally we have arrived at the methodology that we use here at the Institute and it's a diver operated stereo video system. As the name indicates it's diver operated which means one of our divers is actually holding up our stereo video system rig and pushing it underwater. This is done over a 50 meter transect and then we record everything that swims in front of the stereo video system to be later analyzed in the lab. The rig itself looks like this. And what you have is a one meter pole, which on either side has GoPro cameras in special housings. Shout out to Event Measure. They're actually the guys who help us with both the software and the hardware when it comes to these rigs. Now you'll see that inside of each of these is a GoPro camera. These GoPro cameras, while they may look like they're pointing straight ahead, are actually angled ever so slightly inward. The reason for this is to create an overlap, which helps with the sizing of the fish. Now, this thing can be pretty heavy underwater, so it's very important to have your buoyancy right on point when you're using it. Now, just like every other method that we've talked about today, there's also its pros and cons. The pros of this are its extreme accuracy. So we've done tests and I've used um, other methods in the past and even the best divers tend to have accuracy which their error is somewhere around 2.3, 2.5, you know, depends how awesome you are at it, centimeters. Whereas the SVS has an average error of below 0 0.5 or at maximum 0 0.6 centimeters of inaccuracy. That means that when you're looking at a fish, the error is very, very slight and will actually affect your data significantly in comparison to having a person who's not good at sizing underwater. So that's the number one biggest thing. 
Second is that it can be analyzed later. So the analysis for this software actually takes place in a lab where you can have all your books, you can have um, different opinions, and you can actually take your time, think, zoom in, enhance all the things you would need to do to ident correctly identify a fish. And even better, you can audit this information. So you can have all of your fish lined up, but then if something looks weird in the data, you're like, wait a minute, maybe someone didn't analyze this correctly. You can actually go back, check each specific fish in your system and then see if a mistake has been made or not, which is obviously impossible to do if you're running off memorization. So the fact that memorization is involved, really big deal. Now we do it as a transect. That gives us the ability to compare our data with the rest of the information that we acquired during this transect, like all the benthic data and the 3D data. So all of this data that we collect, which we will be talking more about in later videos, are all taken off these 50 meter transects all from the same place, which means it's really easy to compare these, uh, this data with each other. But of course, there are cons to this method. The biggest one is its expense. So the SVS housings, as well as the SVS software, can be quite expensive. And it has to be acquired through legit sources in order to be able to publish your data. You can't just hack it or make it um, up as you go. You usually have to acquire it from the software maker themselves. Also, it can be very hard to transport, trust me. Just so you know, in order to calibrate the two cameras, make sure that they're sizing correctly, you need a calibration cube. This cube is one meter high, one meter across, and one meter in depth, and actually allows your cameras to learn size and learn depth. That's how we keep it sizing correctly. However, this cube is big. Even when, it's, um, when it hasn't been put together, it takes up a big fat tube, which, trust me, not easy to get across airports. So, yes, it's expensive. Yes, it's, all, it's really hard to take around, and it's also quite sensitive. Um, this equipment has to be constantly uh, calibrated every once in a while, just so you know that you are sizing correctly. These calibrations take place in pools, so you also need access to a pool or very, very still, very, very clear water in order to make sure that your calibration is correct. In regards to event measure, we're actually going to be doing a whole in-depth video of how to set it up, how it works, and how we get our data from that software. But just to give you guys a little taste, I'm going to leave you here with a video of some data analysis.